Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, May 14th. <laughs> I had to think about which month it was there for a moment. <laughs> it is a beautiful, slightly cloudy, but glorious spring day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Ah, oh, got to... Uh, Got to get the uh, the plants into the garden today, so I'll talk more about that later, but looking forward to that. We, we picked some up yesterday, and uh, yeah, spring is spring is here at last, it seems. I, uh, I, I, I'm having some problems <laughs> this morning with the, uh, the setup, and I, I don't know if you can tell, I'm, I'm shifted here. I, I changed some things on Friday night right before the live stream. Don't ask me why. I just decided to shift some stuff around, and now nothing is working the way it's supposed to. Everything's out of place. Eh, we'll figure it out. So, I am enjoying some haunted bookshop in this uh, J. Mouton Hawkbill. This is one of the twin pipes that I got with my buddy Couch. And uh, enjoying this today, it, it just kind of came off the rack into my hand. Um, I think, so I, I actually had a chance to talk a little bit with Couch last night. Uh, we were actually in a a group chat with, with another friend of mine, uh, my friend Eric, and then I had a question for Couch that was unrelated to what we were talking about, and, and we wound up chatting by phone for a bit, and uh, it was great. It's all, always good to talk to well, to any pipe smoker, but the couch is a, is a good guy. And since this pipe is one that we we each have a version of it, ordered at the same time from, from uh, J. Mouton, I thought, well, why not? Got couch on my mind, I suppose. And I got this out this morning and uh, was enjoying my first... Uh, First pipe of the day, and thinking about why I wound up with this pipe, and you know, when when you do something like this, when you when you decide that you're going to get a twin pipe with someone, there's some back and forth. You got to decide what shape it's going to be, and you know what the details are going to be, and and so on. And then, of course, with somebody like uh, like Jay Mouton, you're going to say, you know do what you want with it to, to some extent as well. But, uh, you know, we had to pick a basic shape and, uh, couch really wanted a hawk bill. And there's a few of you out there that have known me long enough. Uh, I know I've talked with, with my buddy, uh, Bona Piper about this in the past. There, there are, there are two shape, two pipe shapes that I really, really do not like. I really do not like the the fat author. The uh, yeah, it's typified by the 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 Savinelli 320. I just those things look like unfinished, immature tadpoles to me. It just when I see one of those, I want to I want to take a file to it and fix it. it. It just and and you know other people love them and they're beautiful and everything. I get it, but to me, it's just it's a personal thing. It just and the other one is the hawk bill. Um, they look, especially the, the, the there, there's, that I, I don't want to pick on anybody here, but there's a uh, Italian factory version of the Hawkbill, which is very popular. And to me, it just looks like this modernist, mass-produced factory thing. I, I just do not like it. Again, this is me personally. Uh, the, the shape just doesn't resonate with me. And... It's funny because anything else, you know, odd things, you know, cavaliers, horns, stuff like that. I don't own them, but I look at them and I say, oh, those are pipes. I, I can see the, the aesthetics and, and, and the, the beauty in that. But the, the fat author uh, and the, uh, the hawk bill just always have bothered me. So... I'm talking with Couch about, you know, what pipe we're going to get. And he said, well, I think I really want a Hawkbill. And I don't remember if I told him, oh, God, no, or if I just sort of thought, well, you know, he really wants one. I'll go along with it. Uh, how much could it hurt to have one? I don't remember. But when the pipe arrived, I was really pleasantly surprised by this. And 
what it comes down to, and I hope I'm going to be able to talk about this a bit because it, it struck me this morning why I like this pipe. I, I actually like the shape of this pipe. And if I look, and I did this this morning, I, I did some Googling and looked at Hawkbill pipes. Uh, also tried to find an image for the little bumper at the beginning here. And uh, not surprisingly, I guess in retrospect, if you if you image search for Hawkbill, you'll get lots and lots of pictures of turtles. And <laughs> not many pictures of hogs. So I had to actually search for Bill of a Hawk to get what I wanted. Anyway, uh, you know, looking at the, the sort of standard version uh that, that Italian factory version I that I don't like, there, there are some differences that are small, but they really make a huge difference to me. So one thing that, that Jay did was this angle. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to show it to you, but, but typically this angle is more uh, sort of outward. So this chin kind of juts out a little bit further. It's not a lot. It's not, it's not you know, I'm exaggerating it here with my finger when I, when I do that, but it's just, just a... Oh, I don't know, maybe maybe an eighth of an inch further out at the bottom here. And that really puts a lot of forward weight on this shape and, and makes it look clunky. Makes it makes it just look like a big heavy pipe. The other thing is the the stem the, there's this nice flow that's established between the stem and, and the front end here. You know, it, it appears to be drifting downward, right? And it's one of the oddities in this shape is that it looks like the front of the bowl is actually lower than, but in reality, if you, you know, correct for the slope of the stem and everything, it's not, you know, it's, it's flat, but it's just the, the, the way that it, that weight shifts forward. But on the, the sort of standard versions, this is all a, a very smooth transition and it just really... I don't know, it adds to that sort of mass-produced modernistic look that, that I don't like. You know, I, I think pipe smoking is more about the past in a lot of ways. So, you know, I, I can appreciate a Falcon, you know, with its metal fittings and everything. I can appreciate it as something different, as something, uh, a new twist on things that, you know, quite frankly, didn't really take off. Uh, kind of like the stinger of pipes, if you will. But the, what I'm talking about here is more of a perversion of the, the form rather than a recreation of the form. I don't know if I'm making any sense with this, but to me, that sort of standard hawk bill just looks like somebody said, well, we used to make good quality pipes, but now we're gonna make fast plasticky pipes that people will buy. Uh, because they don't know better, and I don't like that. In this version, Jay did a couple of things that I think are really clever. So, and I don't know if he did this intentionally or this is just sort of what he felt about it. But that little step there, you know, the the fact that this is a uh, well, it's not a military mount, but you know, pseudo military mount, and and it's got that little step. It it breaks up that sort of sleek flow that makes it you feel like you're you're I don't know you're, you're looking at a modern uh, concept car rather than a pipe it breaks that up nicely and then he put this little whale spine accent on the shank that just I think beautifully harkens back that combined with the the red uh, Cumberland uh, red brindle sorry Jay <laughs> I I think that just kind of harkens back to 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 the more um, the older styles and and sort of grounds you in in earth tones and natural uh, products and and then this you know beautiful rustication and all that. But it's these little details. Also the stem. The, the, I don't know if you're going to be able to pick this up, but the stem is actually faceted. It's got this flat facet on the top and on the bottom. Uh, it's just beautifully executed. And then the sides are relatively straight as well. So it's almost a squared off stem that contrasts really nicely with the rounded shank and the, the rounded form. You know, this, this is almost like a like a turned shape in a lot of ways, but that stem is, is breaking that up with the angular qualities to it. 
And I was thinking about this, and it, boy, it's those little details. You know, it's, there's nothing, and I don't think one of them is more important than the others. And I think if you only had one of those details differently, the pipe would not be as, as beautiful to me as it is. And I'm not trying to, to, to say that this is a superior pipe to, to the others. I'm just saying that to my eye, this has beauty where the other ones don't. And it's only because of those little details. So interesting. And you know, everybody's different, of course. But there are things that we can agree on when it comes to aesthetics. So that's always fascinated me. No one thinks the Mona Lisa is ugly. Uh, you might not think she's the most beautiful woman you've ever seen. And, you know, tastes in what is considered a beautiful woman change with time as well. But no one looks at that, that painting and says, that's a ugly, ugly person. So there is some... Uh, there's some truth, some... some objective truth to aesthetics and then there's of course what we bring to it in a subjective fashion and you know the same thing is true of tobacco tastes and alcohol tastes and what what sports team you like and everything else well the sports seems a little bit different because there's there's a lot more subjectivity there because uh, you know i'm a phillies fan and they they stink on ice most of the time <laughs> So it's nothing objective about it. But if you think, you know, to use the Mona Lisa as a, as an example, and you know, with, with the AI capabilities, now this would be an interesting exercise for someone to do, not me, someone that actually knows how to do these things, but you know, take it and, and just adjust features slightly and see where it falls off the cliff. You know, where does it go from being a beautiful painting to a, you know, something you'd find hanging in a hotel, in a Motel 8? Uh, that'd be interesting to know. How many things do you have to change? Because here you have, I would argue from, again, this is, this is my subjective experience of this. But I would argue there's about four things here that had to change from the sort of standard form for this to appear to be beautiful to me. And maybe three would have been enough, but I don't think two would have done it. Maybe I should ask Jason to, uh, to make a series of four of these, each changing just one. <laughs> no. No, no, no. One, one hawk's bill is enough for me, but I do, I do like this pipe. So, um, garden. We went to uh, our CSA had a plant sale yesterday, and every year the CSA plant sale comes around, and I say, "Oh, we should do that," and then we forget. This is the first time we've done it, and we've been at the CSA for probably about six years now, something like that. Uh, so the two things I really wanted to grow this year different were uh, I wanted to have some tomatillos and some ground cherries. If you don't know what ground cherries are, look them up. They're, they're, they're also called gooseberries, but they're, uh, they make a remarkable jam. Anyway, I, I really wanted those two things. Um, and I bought seeds from uh, a, an heirloom seed company that I was sprouting and you know gonna, gonna grow both tomatillos and, and ground cherries. Well, none of my seeds worked this year. I, I think I know why. I bought a new uh, seed starter system that I don't like. And anyway, I wound up with really spindly plants that just died on me before they could they could establish any roots or anything. And the ground cherries just didn't sprout at all. So that failed. And I thought, well, this isn't going to be the year for ground cherries and tomatillos. And we go to the CSA and guess what? They got both ground cherries and tomatillos, nice, sturdy plants ready to put in the ground. So, so we got some of those, we got some regular tomatoes, hopeful this year because of all the work I did on the soil last weekend. Uh, cucumber, some lettuces, 
lettuces. Sounds almost like that should be lettuce-i. Anyway, uh, something else I can't remember. Yeah, anyway, we're, we're going to be getting those in the ground later today. And there's still a few seed things I want to plant. I'm going to probably, I'm going back and forth on green beans this year. Might plant green beans, definitely going to plant arugula because I had a real successful year last year with, with arugula and I like it. So you're going to get some of that in. Maybe some radishes. We'll see. We've got plenty of bed space this year um, and everything is, I'm, I'm really happy with the way the soil turned out. I don't think I talked about that after last, no, I must, yeah, I did it after the last video. So I did move all the, um, I moved a hundred. So those those bags of uh, peat moss I was talking about are 107 pounds each. So I moved three of those, and then six 40-pound uh, bags of compost. Uh, got the hard ground turned over, which was not fun, and then got that all mixed in properly and, and soaked because the peat moss picks up a lot of water, and you gotta you gotta soak it down and then turn it again and everything. So I spent most of the day on Sunday doing this in the in the three garden beds, but I'm really happy with the uh, the soil now. I I took a I keep wanting to call it a spatula, a trowel, you know, a garden trowel, and I held it shoulder height, which would be about four foot for me, I'm guessing, and dropped it into the into the soil, dropped it into the soil, and it it went in three inches, and I thought, well, that's I'm happy with that. That's that's some pretty loose soil. So we'll see how it do it how it does. I'm hopeful. Hope springs eternal. Last year was bad, you know, between the drought and the thirsty rabbits. And the soil being hard as a rock. Uh, it just wasn't a good year for vegetable gardening. So I'm hopeful that this year will be better. Anyway, folks, I, uh, I hope you found that little chat interesting. I, it just struck me today how important those little details are. And uh, again, nothing, nothing objectively wrong with any pipe if you enjoy it. But it's interesting to pay attention to the things that you find subjectively pleasing about pipes. It might help you pick the next one. All right, folks, I'm going to go uh, plant stuff in my gardens. So I hope you all have a great Sunday and you're looking forward to a fantastic week ahead. And until we speak again, we'll look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.